Armed with the measurements you took in the last clip, you're ready to design your label, connect the data, and create a merged document of filled out name tags, or mailing labels, or business cards, or tent cards, or whatever project you are building. Ready your design. If you're following along creating name tags with the course demo files, open nametagsstart.indd from the name tags project folder. As you can see, I've already designed the name tag I want to print on the self-adhesive label sheet from World Label. Again, you can't directly use the template from World Label for merging, but you can design in it. And then, when you're satisfied with the design, when everything is the size and shape needed to fit within the label, select all the objects, create a new document the same size as the template sheet, which in my case is standard 8.5 by 11 inches, and then paste the object you just copied. You don't even need to use paste in place because the placement of the label artwork in this source document is totally irrelevant to the performing of a data merge. This is exactly where the name tag start in design document begins. Let's now work with it to generate our labels. Select the data source, which is the data.csv in the name tags project folder. As you saw, it contains only one column of data, so we only have one placeholder to insert. Replace the word name with the placeholder and we're ready to merge. On the Records pane, make sure All Records is selected under Records to Merge. Then set the Records per Document Page drop-down field to Multiple Records. Because we have multiple records per page, we need to edit some options on the, you guessed it, Multiple Record Layout tab of the dialog. Before doing anything else, check the box beside Preview Multiple Record Layout so that we can see what it is we're doing. Set the margins to match those you wrote down from the template. In fact, just set the top and left margins. The other two don't really matter in this case because it's going to build the page from the top left corner. Down on the spacing section, set the space between columns as the width you copied from the rectangle we used to find the horizontal space between labels. The between rows value should be the height measurement from the second rectangle we drew in the label template. The labels, or business cards, or whatever you're making, should now all be aligned to fit on the pre-cut, perforated, or scored sheets of your project. Check the Arrange By option above spacing. Do you want records to be printed in columns first, meaning record 1 starts at the top of the column, record 2 below it, record 3 below that, and so on, or do you want to go across first, putting record 2 beside record 1? If your records are filling the sheet, the decision of columns or rows first doesn't much matter. When it does matter is when you print less than a full sheet. Here, for instance, the four name tags will leave four others blank below them. At some point in the future, I may want to print on those four unused name tag labels. Is it going to be easier for me to print them as four on the bottom, or as a continuous column of four? That answer depends on your printer and workflow, so I'll let you answer it for yourself. Make the arrangement decision, choose the appropriate radio button, and then click OK. You now have a new InDesign document with merged labels ready for printing. If you use the course demo files, you should have the same two and a half pages of labels I do. There are a few other tips for working with multiple record layouts I'd like to impart in the next clip.